Christ and hope that you'll be able to feel the spirit that's here today and be as we, especially as we partake of the emblems today. I'd like to welcome you out and I'd like to welcome those on live stream and um, hope that you also can feel the spirit that's with us today and be able to participate with us. We welcome you all. Um, as to call to worship, I'm going to read my favorite psalms, and I think this is appropriate for the times that we're in right now, the discord and the not knowing what's going on, and that's Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for the name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will lay in the house of the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The words of the Lord. If you'll please stand and join with our singing, we'll open the meeting today with um, hymn number 159. 159. Spirit of God, descend. And please stand. Father in heaven, we gather today uh, with, the, with thy spirit, and we ask that thy spirit does dwell with us. We give thee thanks for the opportunity that we have to meet together and to be able to fellowship one with another to worship thee. We're thankful for everything now has bestowed upon us, this weather that we've been having, and and all the many blessings that are bestowed upon us. Again, Father, we thank Thee for everything that we have. We ask Thy Spirit to be with us. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
Okay, Marcus, if you'll come forward, and uh, we'll have the prayer over the offer offerings, and then we'll proceed from there. Father in heaven, we thank thee for the opportunity that we have to uh, give of our substance and be able to help the poor and the needy. We pray that thy spirit will be with us and help us to help to make sure that these funds go to the way they are. We're thankful for everything now is given to us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you. Now let us open our hymnals to hymn number 103, Ferris Lord Jesus, 103, and you can remain seated. come to the most important part of the service today, and that is the blessing of the sacrament and offering up that it'll give. As Grant comes up to prepare the emblems, if you'll turn to hymn number 71, we'll sing that while he uh, prepares the sacrament for us.
the prayer is offered, the emblems will be blessed and then set, presented to them. Okay. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, which was witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen.
take of the wine. Sorry about that earlier slip up. The It just pops in there. You'd think I'd know better because I have to admit to you that this is the 10th anniversary of my being coming here to this building and being baptized by Rowan and being confirmed by Argel Gross. And that day I'll always stand very true into my heart because there was manifestations here I can testify to you that during that time there were angels that appeared in this room and I and a lot of others that were here will never forget that time but enough about me I want to be able to um, introduce our speaker again Vern um, he's become a friend of mine I get these emails and messages from him all the time to encouragement and guidance and stuff and I really do appreciate that and I appreciate the friendship that has developed with that. So Vern Foster, the time is yours. Good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to be in the light. Scriptures of old say people who were there that had little flames above their heads. We all have our light today. 
And if you think about batteries, the more you have, the brighter your light is. And it's good that we are gathered together for our light to shine. In a world of darkness, we need the light. And from this little building in this corner, and these brothers and sisters this morning, it is shining into the heavens. Glory be to God. I am thrilled and happy to see Neiman and Terry Johnson here this morning. I was going to say, uh, Lehman was is my mentor. But then I was thinking, Terry is just as much my mentor. Mm -hmm. Maybe more than Lehman. And it's great to see you. Thank you for coming out. I'd like to start out with a, with a scripture this morning. It's from the Book of Mormon. It's from the Book of Ether. Chapter 5. 27 to 29. And if you're looking through the uh, Latter-day Saint Book of Mormon, I envy your pictures. you got some nice pictures in there. It's also the Book of Ether, but it's chapter 12, 26 through 28. And when I said this, the Lord spake unto me, saying, Fools mock but they shall mourn, and my grace is sufficient for the meek, that they shall take no advantage of your weakness. And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness, that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me, for if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then I will make the weak things become strong unto them. Behold, I will show unto the Gentiles their weakness, and I will show unto them that faith, hope, and charity bringeth unto me the fountain of all righteousness. <clears throat> Many years ago, I was driving through Raytown, and I don't remember why or what my activities were at the time, but there was a sign off to the road, and I read it, and it said, come on back, I ain't mad at nobody. And that has stuck in my head all these years. And it was in front of a tavern. But you think about it, there's a war going on there. There's two angles to that. Satan would say, come on back. All your friends are here. He'd say, come on back, we can have some more good times. He could say, let's play a game. Pick a card. Ace of spades. Pick another card. Ace of spades. Pick another card. Ace of spades. He's the destroyer. The sign is enticing people to come on back. Come on back. And I guess that's been rolling around in my head until the point that I heard the Lord say, you need to go tell people to come on back. And I hadn't been to church for a long time. The Lord had told me what I should do and that's, after, that's to look after the business in my own house. And I did that to the best of my ability. 
And then he said to me a little bit louder, you need to tell people to come on back. And he wouldn't let me go. I said, okay, I'll listen. I'll do it. It's been a long time, but if you want me to do it, I'll do it. I promised myself I wouldn't do this. But the Spirit is upon me. And then Zandi says, I am the off-scouring. And if I am called to be a fool before Christ, I'll be a fool all day long. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm here to say, we all need to come on back because where there's more people, there's more power. Do we believe that God is through with us? I'm head shaking. Nope. Let us rejoice. Satan stands as our accuser before God. He wants us to think it is over. We are lost. There is no hope. No one cares. There is no forgiveness. Why are you going on? This is not easy, brothers and sisters. Each of us has been given a talent. Each of us has been given many talents. There'll come a day when we're accountable for our talents. And we'll go to turn them in. If a man were to go and turn in his talents and say, look, I buried them, I've kept them safe, they are in perfect condition, they are very good to excellent. They've never been used. The receiver would say, okay, you go get on that elevator over there and you press B for basement. Next man comes along and says, I used my talents. Um, I didn't use a lot of them, but there's some I used. And the receiver would say, very well, go over to that elevator and press the ground floor. Another man might go, or a woman might go, and say, um, my talents, my, my bag is empty. Um, I used them all, and I found some laying around that other people weren't using, so I used them too. I, is that okay? And the receiver would say, bless you, you go get on that elevator, and you press P for penthouse. You're going to the top. I got a mansion for you. Why don't we use our talents? God's not through with us. Are we going to turn in an empty bag of all gone? Or are we going to carry a whole load of them up there and lay them down like gold bricks and say, eh, never used them. They were precious, but I never used them. I'll admit I'm lazy in a lot of things. Jules Renard said this, laziness is nothing more than the habit of resting before I get tired. <laughs> so I'm just resting before I get tired. <clears throat> Last time I spoke, I forgot to mention a few things. Lucifer is not omnipresent. 
He's not present in all places at all times. He's not omniscient. He doesn't have a knowledge of everything. He's not omnificent. He's not unlimited in creative power. He does not know all. He does not see all. He is not all powerful. Only God is sovereign. We're all behind enemy lines. We are all under attack. It's vital that we come, as we have here today, to the Lord's table. We must renew our minds. We must comfort our souls. We must renew our portion of the Holy Spirit. We must drive the darkness from our lives. Brothers and sisters, we need the light to shine in every nook and cranny of our being. Because if there's a little dark spot and spirits around you see it, they see that chink in your armor, something you had hidden. No one in this world can see it, but the uh, powers that be can see it. They say, right there, we can get to them. Right there's a spot. We can stick that dagger right in there. And that's where evil works. We need to clean out the corners of our souls. We need to brush the cobwebs out of there, the spider webs, and we need to let the light of the Holy Spirit fill it. Then we'll be, we have the endowment. For we will be filled with righteousness. And the only way to achieve that is through the power of prayer. The prayers of many avail much. The trick is, can we keep that little light, that little dark spot from coming back? When we walk right out the door, and before we do know it, we're doing what we did last month. Can we get through the day without letting that little black hole open up in our being? Can we get through the month until we once again come back to the table of the Lord? <laughs> Maybe we ought to do this a little more often. There's no one saying you can't. The fact is, we're all miracles here. Has anyone ever had a close call? Ha! <laughs> You're on my page. Have you ever come close to being severely injured? Have you ever had a close brush with death? If you have, raise your hand, testify. Glory to God. Glory to God. We are all miracles. We are all at risk constantly. If we live, it's God's will. If we die, it's God's will. We are His. We made a covenant. As a child, how many learned a little prayer as your mother or father put you to bed at night? Were you told you had a guardian angel? Believe it. Thinking about children here for a second. Woman brings beings into the spiritual realm from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. I had never thought about that until I heard someone say it on the radio. Woman brings beings from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. As a family unit and as a church family, it's our job to instill traditional values and morals in our children. 
And Woody spoke something about this last week, the family. Sadly, we're usually young and we're often too late smart. And then when we're older, as parents, a lot of times, we'll give ourselves a pretty good beating. We'll say, I must have done something wrong. If only maybe I'd done something different. But is our struggle that much different than everybody else's that's ever been created? Adam had a long time to, admit, to administer it to his family. And he had, he had Abel, but he also had Cain. Lehi had Nephi and Sam. But he also had Laman and Lemuel. And the Holy Spirit shook them to their very bones. And they still went their own way. So I'm saying as a parent, to you parents, if you're beating yourself up, give yourself a break. Most time our kids are already adults. They make their own choices, they pay their own way. Just, if they won't listen to you, don't wanna be around you. I have children, I have grandkids, I have great grandkids. And they're not in the house today. So there are a lot of people out there that need our prayers. Lucifer wants to destroy God's children. Monday, I looked at worldometers.info. I saw there were 6,950,000 abortions already this year. And the number is still going up. I've seen the elderly in nursing homes neglected with the virus, given morphine to keep them comfortable pushed off in a back room, not able to see their families, their loved ones. I've seen young people facing temptations we've never known. You have too many young people that are driving by, 14, 15 years, 16 years old, in stolen cars, shooting at other children, killing six, seven, eight-year-old, nine-year-old kids. Satan wants to destroy him. Who chooses who gets to live in this world? I will never insult God by calling him the great physician. I've seen the real side of too many doctors. But babies do not choose to die. If one of your talents is protesting, maybe you should protest something. I'm not ashamed to get out on the corner with a billboard and a giant syringe I made over my shoulder in a fluorescent vest. But I'm a little worried that I'm the only one out there. I've done that five times. I went with the nurses down at KU. I wasn't in front of the TV camera that day, but I was there protesting. Someone trying to take someone else's freedoms and holding their livelihood up as a bartering tool. But I've also seen people praying in front of the Planned Parenthood I don't know. You decide what you're going to do. I know there are many who say, I don't need to go to church. I love the outdoors. 
I find God in a tree stand, in a duck blind, on the golf course. I say you're only fooling yourself. We are guaranteed failure if we do not look reality in the face. Strays are prey for the wolves. Why do you think the Good Shepherd left the entire flock to go save one? There are spiritual wreckers and destroyers. There are evil spirited special forces. They look for weakness, such as pride, disobedience, anger, lust, envy, and all manner of sin. This is the chink in our armor that cannot be hidden from them. Now this, is, this message here is not for everybody, and if it doesn't apply to you, it may apply to someone else. But do you ever read horoscopes? I have a free newspaper thrown in my yard every week and I go through it and there's a horoscope in there. If we go to a Chinese restaurant and look at that paper they throw down in front of you, it's got all the little animals on it. It's right there in front of your face. Do you look to the stars for guidance? I say it's better to look to, to who made the stars holds them in their orbits, and keeps them from crashing into this planet. Ever played with an Ouija board? Ever seen a palm reader? Ever been to a seance? Ever picked up tar tarot cards? Ever got into yoga? Eastern religions? Spinning a prayer wheel? You can spin a prayer wheel all day long, but I don't think that'll get you to our Lord and Savior. Ever ring a bell in front of a temple? Thinking, that's eh, it's just play, but I'll leave a little offering, money, food, maybe flowers to a, a god of stone, metal, or wood. Ever tried to acquire the power of chi as you studied martial arts. Ever tried to meditate and remote view someone? Sometimes we're separated from those we love and we long for them so much we try to see them. Ever been weak and helpless and down sick? Ever been high or drunk, over medicated? Are you prone to fits of rage or anger? This message is for someone. And I tell them, beware. You left yourself open for evil spirits. The thing about evil spirits is, if you get one on you, You might be able to get it off of you through prayer, through administration. And he may leave. But the scriptures say if he comes back and finds that house vacant and empty, he's coming in. And he's bringing seven with him. And they are stronger than the one that left. It's a spiritual battle, brothers and sisters. As Andy says, it's nothing to be trif nothing to trifle with, but we need to be aware of it. We cannot just walk blindly through life. This is from section 17, 6b through e. And we know that justification through the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is just and true. And we know also that sanctification through the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ 
is just and true. To all those who love and serve God with all their mights, minds, and strength. But there is a possibility that man may fall from grace and depart from the living God. Therefore let the church take heed and pray always, lest they fall into temptations. Yea, and even let those who are sanctified take heed also. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is our link to the Father. Where many pray, there is power and more power. We all need to pray, and we need the prayers of others. Here you can have an anointing. Here you can have hands laid on you. Here, if your faith is sufficient, you can have a miracle. There is stronger faith in a group. We all need help. There is protection. There is hope. There is faith. There is healing. There is love and salvation. The church is the body of Christ. We need you here. And you need to be here. There's people out there looking and the Spirit has told them you need to move, you need to move, you need to get out of there, that's a bad place to be. And they don't know where they should go, but they know that they need to bug out. They got bags with stuff in it so they can bug out. They need guidance and direction. They need to be sought out and found. They need to be saying, we need to be saying, uh, just go that way. Just head on that way. Let the Lord lead you. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. You will surely find your way. But come on. Come on. We need more power. We need the light. We need what you can bring. We need builders. We need carpenters. We need electricians. We need teachers. We need doctors. We need nurses. We need everybody. Because we're building a kingdom here. And we're going to look up. And the Lord's going to look down. And Marcus explained the Star of David to me one time. There's two triangles. One is pointing down, one is pointing up. When they meet each other in the sky, you got the star. We want to be in the star. So brothers and sisters, I would say, go with God. Trust in Jesus Christ. Stay with God all your life. Amen. And if some of you has gone over your head, or you want to just refresh yourself this week, read the second, read second Peter. It's only 61 verses, but it's worth finding. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you for those words. Um, you didn't disappoint. If you will please turn your hymnals to hymn number 225, the church is one foundation, and then Grant Heap will give us the closing prayer. Two, two, five. Please stand.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this time that we've had to fill Thy love and Thy Spirit and hear the spoken words. And we ask Thee to please continue to watch over us that we be able to travel in safety and that we're able to continue to carry Thy Spirit with us. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.